Question 7 is to sketch the graph using the first and second derivative tests. Now there are different ways you can do the first derivative test, second derivative, find the concavity and all that. But I will tell you the easiest of all methods. We need the calculator for this. In your calculator, type this equation as it is. Use alpha x cube minus 3 alpha x squared plus 3x. Now once you have typed this equation, you can just look into the four options. Now we know this is the answer, right? The graph is the main thing, what we need to do. So you will have four options, four different graphs. Just choose any point. Let's take calc, calc at zero. Do calculate at zero. It must be zero because there are variables. So it's zero. Is it matching? Yes. How about we will try another point, say 2.4. Calculated at 2.4 and we will check here it is showing 3.7 so 2.4 is somewhere over here it's yeah it corresponds towards that point it's not accurate but if you use a scale and you know just put it over here then you will see it's accurate because this is 25 so each one will be about 5 and this is somewhere over here so yeah it's less than uh, 4 so this is correct. So same way you can test other points. Here we can see there are four different options for this particular graph, right? What you do is first type this equation in the calculator. Once you type this equation in the calculator, calculate at different values. Over here, I can see the two graphs are undefined at zero and over here they are defined at zero. So my starting point would be calculate at zero. And what is the answer I'm getting? It's a math error. It is not defined because it becomes 4 divided by 0. So now I can easily eliminate these two graphs. This is wrong. This is wrong. Why? Because this is defined at 0. This is also defined at 0. So my answer is either the option 1 or the option 2 because they are both undefined at 0. Now I will choose another point strategically such that I can easily eliminate one of the option. Now don't just put say minus 6. I mean, you can put minus 6, you are getting different answers, but I will choose a point, say, 1, because I know at 1, the answer is more than 4. What about over here? When I choose 1, it should be 0. So let me calculate at 1, the answer is 5. Can you see? At 1, it is 5. Yes, that's accurate, because this is uh, somewhere over here, and yes, that is 5. Whereas over here at 1, it must be 0. So the option 2 is wrong. The correct answer is this particular graph. So this is how we can easily solve problems by graphing just by putting it in the calculator. Now you might think, why don't I do mode 7 and do the table? Yes, you can do that as well. You can type the equation over here. But then you need to start, stop, and there is lots of things you need to check. You will get a set of values. You need to try and find which is the correct one. I personally feel when you type the equation directly and do the calc method, you can easily you know, eliminate other options and get the correct one. So it's up to you to choose any method. So you can do the same thing for all the other problems as well. Each and every problem will work by this method because every graph, every function can be uh, you know, graphed. And therefore, you can easily solve by doing this method. Or you can do, you know, the first derivative, second derivative, and then come up with the graph as well. So please try to explore different methods because this is all an MCQ. Try to go with the easiest method. So uh, this is the answers. I'm just going through the answers. You can easily solve it up. Now, to find this presentation, you can just click on the link in the description and download it. So I'll directly jump to the end problems now because all of these problems can be done by the method, the shortcut method, which I just now told you. In the question number seven, there is another different type of topic, which is from 49 to 52. Here, they have given you the asymptotes and then asked you, to give a possible graph. Now, if it's a graph, now if we come to the last four questions of this particular talk, now if we move to the last four questions of this question number seven, we can see that there is a different type of problem. We need to write a possible function 
for the given asymptotes. Now, if you have been given the graph, again, you can do the easy method. Put some random x values in the, say, for example, you will have this equation in your answers, right? You'll have four different answers. You can start putting x values, say, instead of this equation, instead of x, put 1 and check which is giving the correct answer in the graph. This is one way to check it. But if they want you to write just from these asymptotes, only if this is the question, it's very simple. I'll tell you how we do it. Now, you need to know whenever the x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, over here you can see these x values, isn't it? That means it's undefined over there. That is the vertical asymptotes, vertical lines. And this y denotes horizontal asymptotes, horizontal lines. It's very simple. If it is 0, I will start first. If y is 0, then all you need to do is the numerator over here must be having lesser power. See, the power over here must be less than the denominator. If you have over here power 1 and 2, that's enough. Then it is y is equal to 0. But when y is any other number, I'll come to that in a minute. But first, let me do x values. Can you see this x is equal to minus 1, 1, 1, 2? That means in the denominator, just write the opposite sign of this. If we have x equals 1, x minus 1, and then x equals 2 means x minus 2 in the denominator. Why? Because now this particular equation is undefined at these two points. Because if x is equal to 1, what happens? 1 minus 1, 0, it's undefined. Now x is 2, 2 minus 2, 0, undefined. So whatever the values you have over here, just write them in the denominator in terms of minus. Now, if you're thinking this one, no, that's fine. I'll write one more equation. Only the denominator I'm writing. x minus 1, x plus 1. Now, if you multiply this over, if you multiply by distributive property or use a square minus b square formula, you are going to get x squared my plus x minus x plus minus 1. Sorry. And then you can simplify this and it becomes x squared minus 1. That's why it's written as x squared minus 1. You can write what I just now wrote. You can just write x minus 1, x plus 1. This is a possible solution. There are many different types of solutions possible. I hope that is clear. And since over here we have 2x, it is x squared in the denominator. Write the x over here lesser than the denominator's degree. So I can write x as power 1. That's why this is a possible answer. Now, over here, when y is not 0, all you need to do is write these denominators as it is. x, it will be minus 1, x plus minus 2. Here, just write the same degree. It must be same if there is... Here, x and x, there's two degrees, right? Here, just write same degree. And then, the coefficient will be whatever this you have over here. That's the number. If it was 4, you just write 4 and the same degree of x. Now, let's look at this one. Say, for example, this one over here. Minus 1, minus, see, x is minus 1 and x is minus 3. Here, y is 2. Write 2 and the same degree. Now, what about this problem over here? Now, this one, we can write minus 1 plus 1. It's very simple. Now, why is there a square root? Why? Because now, if you just have, say, x divided by x minus 1, x plus 1. This is a rational function, isn't it? What happens is you will have graph something like this. But you will have the same asymptote. Both the horizontal asymptote will be same, just one asymptote. See, in these cases, you will just have a horizontal asymptote at the same spot for both. But when we have two horizontal asymptotes, we need to split it out. So that's why when we put square root, basically, you will get like this one, two different points. Since you are not graphing it accurately, you will just be given these asymptotes. You will have same values. It will be plus and minus two or one. So all you need to do is write it as it is, x minus 1, x plus 1, and then you have over here what, 2, just write 2x, but don't forget the square root. Now imagine this was 3 and this was 3, then all you need to do is this as 3 and then the square root for the given uh, x vertical asymptotes.